Wow. Um, thank you all so much. Uh, and I'll have to thank Al at the office when I see him uh, when hurricane season is over. <laughs> Until then, it's impossible to find Al Roker, so <laughs> that's going to be that. It is such an honor to be in this room with all of you, um, to be with this organization that I admire so deeply, uh, and to be with all of my fellow nominees or honorees. Thank you so, so much. As Al just said, I just returned from a long stretch covering the devastation of Hurricane Helene in North Carolina and seeing the reality of ch climate change up close. Getting dressed today, I have to be honest with you, I had to trade some smelly cargo pants and mud caked rain boots for this and I felt a little funny about it. Uh, for a moment, I looked in the mirror and I wasn't so sure anymore. I worried that I wouldn't be presentable to you, that I would be tired, and that I wouldn't be able to find my words. But then I realized that I do think I still have something valuable to share with all of you. Our world is changing very, very quickly. And the young people in this room know that better than anyone else. Communities that once thought that they would never have to see the impacts of that change, where they thought they could stay out of the fray or out of the path of certain storms, well, they are realizing that it is impossible to outrun all of this. For a moment when I was down there in North Carolina, this made me very afraid. People there have lost everything. Many still don't have running water and mis- and disinformation is spreading there like wildfire. It's getting hard for people to distinguish fact from fiction in a time of crisis. Some seem to even be deliberately taking advantage of people's confusion and pain, gleefully sharing fake stories about how immigrants stole the funds for hurricane survivors and rumors that President Biden has machines that can control the weather. Many spread these lies, knowing they will hurt people who are in their darkest hour and will have extreme need. It made me wonder for a moment, is what I do as a journalist even worth it anymore? Is anyone in interested in the truth? So for a little while, I wallowed in some self-pity, and I worried that my profession is losing its way and losing the battle. The battle to keep people informed, healthy, and feeling supported. But then I remembered I had a job to do. <laughs> so I got up early in the morning and stayed out late at night. My team went from town to town in North Carolina asking people, what happened to you? Recording videos of their stories, broadcasting their pleas for help, their pleas for blankets, for food, for prayers. I kept telling people stories and listening to their words anyway. They would thank us and tell us they were grateful that someone had come by to see them or to hear their story. And so I, I realized this. We haven't lost this battle yet, but we do need more soldiers, more writers, and more storytellers in this fight. Telling the truth, writing down what you know, Witnessing and recording other stories, these are sacred and powerful acts. In fact, people wouldn't try to discredit our professions, ban our books, spread lies or fake images, if the written and broadcasted word wasn't something that was so, so powerful that it could determine the course of the future. It could save people facing disaster, and it could heal people who have lost everything. Writers and storytellers make the world and form its memory. I think some of us have gotten a little bit too comfortable in my field, assuming audiences will hold on to us and support us no matter what, and they'll find their way through the mess on their own. But I see now, there are so many storms coming. So we need all of you in this fight, as authors, as journalists, poets, illustrators, photographers, future filmmakers. We need you. 
And you'll need to earn back the trust of your readers, your viewers, in new ways. You'll need to deliver them your stories in fresh formats and styles. And you're going to need to enter these creative fields with very clear eyes. Knowing that sometimes it's going to feel like a fight, and you could end up frustrated, covered in some mud. But we do what we do because our words are the calm and the clarity when the storms come. Thank you all so much.